20 minutes or so, so we're going to talk as fast as we can. Because <laughs> uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, okay. So what excites me, I mean, there's a lot of things that I love about this film. Um, but one thing is that there is a lot of movies about people coming out and uh, gentlemen realizing that they are not supposed to be with a wife or a girlfriend or something, like, you know, in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and and that's what the movie is about, which is great. But this is, what I love about this is that it's what happens next and what happens with the relationship with the wife and what happens, um, in your case, with your partner. And I just love that this is a film that will now be in the LGBT canon. We are seeing a whole new type of story. So um, I'm curious, how did you come up with this idea? I mean, besides you know, living. <laughs> um, I mean, the initial fascination came about because I, I just I was trapped making road trips, and then I was making you know stops in these gas stations in small towns, Texas, and it was like realizing that people lived there. Um, being one thing, and secondly, and secondly, asking myself, is there a gay people who live here? Because if there is, it would be so crazy. Uh, and and that sparked my curiosity and trying to figure out what kind of lives they had if there were gay people who lived in small towns. And I started researching and reaching out to people and, and started to talk to you know gays who live in small towns. And it was basically like just like you know putting all these data together and trying to figure out, okay, like a lot of these things I cannot really relate to. Uh, but there's something really interesting about the dynamics and their relationships that, you know, some of them, like, are still, you know, in good terms with their ex-wives and all that kind of stuff. And that's a lot of these sort of, like, weird sort of, like, um, out and not out sort of thing that they have to try to figure out in, when they're um, interacting with people in their town. And I thought that was, like, really interesting. Like, it was just like, wow, you actually have to, like, really calculate everything in advance, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and that's true of a lot of small towns in our country, and of course we were talking a little bit internationally earlier. Uh, uh, my girlfriend grew up in a small town in Texas, and when I go back to visit, um, I just, I felt so connected um, to uh, your character. Uh, I don't know, it just really, it really struck me as hearing all the stories that she had and, and things like that, and uh, I just found it so well written. I'd like to, you to talk a little bit about what it was like to work um, with your partner writing this script, and if you could um, share how you guys came to start. Um, I worked on the script for it. I started writing the script for it almost 10 years ago, and I just got to the point where I felt like I was hitting a wall as a writer, uh, and I felt like a lot of it was my limitations as someone who's, you know, I was born and raised in Malaysia, and I came here, so English is my second language. So I felt like dialogue was kind of like my handicap. Um, and if you're writing about really authentic, sort of like southern characters, it needs to not sound like the way I talk, you know? <laughs> so my whole thing was like, oh, like I have to like try to figure that out. And, and then David Lowry is a friend of mine, he made a film, another film called Ain't the Body Sings, which is also like sort of set in Texas. Um, and I was like, yeah, you've lived here for like forever. Like, just clean it all out. Like, make it sound like less Asian. <laughs> Um, so that's essentially what we did, but we sat down together and we, we did a whole pass, but in the, in the meantime he was asking a lot of questions, he said, oh, what about this, like, we, we just talked about this in the dialogue, but we have to write a new scene to address that, you know, a lot of the, like, the stuff that has to do with uh, Marcus's character, Ernesto, with the sister coming to visit the, the coma guy, is completely written, like, we just sort of wrote that entirely new subplot together. I don't know if this is mentioned in the intro, but... These guys won the Outfest um, Jury Prize for Best Acting. <laughs> and I'll say that normally the um, award was to one person, and the jury was like, nope, we're not getting it. Both of them were not picking, it was the two of them together. Um, which is fascinating because you guys aren't in that many scenes together. It's like these parallels parallel lives. How was it, but at the same time, it's, it feels to me, and maybe to you guys, that they were meant to be together. Just one time. You just, please, right by right there. Right 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 so how was it for you guys to build intimacy? I mean, were you guys on the set? 
how was it to build intimacy in this chemistry, having not been on the set that many days together? I met Bill, the, the, I think we shot the diner scene, and we, we were, the first thing we shot together was the uh, outside scene in the parking lot. So usually as an actor, you try to, like, you know, well, the way I work is I try to find something really quick to, okay, I have to find something that I, I like about this person, quick, anything, anything. Good look. <laughs> well, it wasn't hard. <laughs> yeah, he walks up and took me you know, a few seconds and then I was like, I told you, when is the sex scene going to happen? Because <laughs> I've been here for two weeks now. <laughs> 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 there you go. <laughs> am, I, am I right in thinking that actually the first thing we shot was not the parking lot, but just that diner the shot, diner diner shot diner where we did that slow zoom thing on the yeah, diner? Yeah, and we talk. So we're having a conversation nothing to do with the actual film. Right. We're just sort of getting to know each other as Marcus and Bill. And I think whether or not that was intentional or not, it actually helped me a great deal to just um, get um, start to have a, a, as real a human interaction with a total stranger as you can while the film's running. And uh, it sort of forced, uh, 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 forced us into an immediate intimacy that we were able to come in to uh, from ourselves to begin with. So I think that actually helped me a lot. And look at him. He's all right. Yeah, I met his wife and um <laughs> he just outed me. <laughs> That's right. Hey, but you we never heard that, right guys? <laughs> um, one of my favorite scenes and I jumped in so I could watch it is when you guys finally do hook up and you're uh well, you're just and you can just feel that your heart is just pounding out of your to your chest. And I'm curious because I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I mean, we've all felt. I mean, hopefully we've all felt love, and we've all had that experience at least once in our life. How when you were doing that, what how what were you channeling? Because I totally connected to that. Um. Well, you know, like you said, it's something we've all experienced in our lives. Just, I, I mean, I think it sort of goes back to your original question, also in terms of how. How do you spending very little time with each other and still working toward a certain intimacy? I, I I think I think both characters are building. To, they both have. They they know. I can only speak for myself, I guess. But um, Gabe just knows that there's something else for him. He's in some in one part of him has given it up. Part of him has decided to go entirely into his ex-wife and his child. And but. But he spends the whole time being ready for that to happen to him, whether or not he believes that actually will. So um, there's the momentum of that, that. I had an acting professor who said every time you start a scene, the, the character is thinking, this is going to work. And, uh, and I think that's really true of these guys. They, they just they keep getting up off the mat. You know? and, uh, and each time they get back off the mat, they're more ready for, the, for their match. So he was going to take, he's going to take it on his own. And in terms of editing, was there... Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of editing, was there ever a point where the stories um, blended differently, or there was like one story and another story, or was it always written that way, or...? It, this is pretty similar to the way it was written in the script, and, and part I mean, I thought it was a great script, but I also thought there was a lot of fun that we could have in the editing process playing with the two stories, and things got shifted around, um, some scenes got deleted, so we have to move something forward or rearrange, um, and then I think at one point we did try, I don't think we watched it, like we put it together, we did try something called like the Chunking Express Cut, where it was Gabe's story, <laughs> and then Ernesto's story, and then they met. Um, and then we were like, yeah, this sucks. And so we just we threw that away. So like, we just we just kind of looked at how it looked in the timeline and Final Cut Pro, and we're like, uh, no. So it, um, yeah, so this has always been kind of the structure, and um, there's just ways to make sure you know, it's sort of keeping, making sure we're seeing both people, and everyone's kind of engaged and knows the stories was the challenge, and, but the script made it easy. So yeah, I I love how you were able to do that, and it just feels perfect. Thank you.
And Hutch, can you talk a little bit about your approach to shooting this film? Um, sure. Uh, Yen and I had a lot of conversations, and the first thing that usually comes up with most directors is how dark is dark. And with Yen, it was always darker, and which is great because that's exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, I don't like over lighting, so uh, you know it'd be funny we'd be on set, and I would kind of design how I wanted the lighting to be, and then my gaffer would go, you know, would add another light because you think I would want it, and then you know it's like, all right, turn that one off. Okay, turn that off. Okay, it looks perfect. My gaffer. Really? That's that's what? Yes, yes, looks great. Looks good. And so, um, you know, it, it's it's how I like. Like live at, you know at home as well as I only like like one light or like, no light on. I don't like a lot of bright lights on. So, so yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. There's something more dynamic too, especially considering that you know this movie deals with loneliness a lot. It's nice to kind of be able to play with a lot of single source lighting. We've got stuff that's where you don't fully see the characters because they're cloaked in their own kind of like sadness. And um, and then when the, the the love scene comes on, even even the, when they're talking in the, in the living room before that, it brightens up a little bit, it's a little flatter, because you want to see both of them really well, and then when the love scene comes, it's just this warm glow that just covers them completely in the soft light that it just is perfect for like how it is, and then it just gradually just gets like brighter and brighter towards the end, after you know the diner and then the outside, it's like the brightest scene in the whole movie is then outside the diner, so, so um, it was just kind of playing a lot with, with the, the, the light and the dark. Um, yes, and with that, let's open it up right up front. And I'm going to repeat the questions for those of you guys in the back. Uh, the presence of Amy and John Merriman, uh, there's a community of filmmakers and actors in Austin and in Texas. I wanted to ask Tim about how that community embraced this kind of storytelling, because you got fabulous performance out of all of the actors. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, so the, the question and the comment also was just about um, you know, Amy Simons, who plays the ex-wife, um, and also John Merriman, who's an Austin actor. And Amy is not from Austin, but she's very much very known there because of her... She, she has had a lot of films that play at, Austin, uh, at South by Southwest, uh, and she's now on you know, the current season of The Killing, and you know, on Christopher Guest's uh, HBO show, Family Tree. Um, so the, the, the whole community is actually very tight-knit in Texas. Like, David Lowry and James Johnson and those guys who are, who are in Dallas, and I, I used to live in Dallas and I knew those guys. And like our scene is very much almost like everybody has sort of had sex with everyone, like you know, in a filmmaking way, not like really. You know, it's maybe, it's, uh, maybe to an extent. Um, but it's kind of like it's very tight knit and very much very easy to sort of like, hey, can you? I, I don't know if like I didn't know Amy. I was like, David, you know, you cut her film. Can you, you know, like send her my script and see what she thinks, and then it's like that kind of, we, we hook each other up that way, and then she reads the script, she loves it, she calls me out and we had a conversation, and, and so and so with like the rest, of like a lot of the cast members who are kind of like that too, and a lot of people in the crew, where we just sort of help each other out. Another question? Yeah, so I'm going to ask you can you say anything about uh, the artistic changes or the changes in your way of working between something like Happy Birthday and this? Oh my god, you're one of those people. I <laughs> say <laughs> 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 my seat. Um, so uh, this question was about my very first film that I made back in 2002. Something I don't want to really revisit. Um, <laughs> And how, how my style changed, I, I would say, like, I still consider myself a very insecure filmmaker, and I doubt myself a lot. I would say I doubt myself less by working with people who are more secure with themselves. So, it's like, with these guys, it's kind of, sometimes I'll be like, does that line sound really Asian? Or <laughs> and they will be like, no, 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 it's fine, are you crazy? It totally sounds fine, it totally sounds American. And I'll be like, okay, all right, cool. As long as you do that one. <laughs> it's like that kind of, because I feel like it's the same way with Pachin Don also, where I always detect my bullshit before everyone else does, like almost obsessively, and then everyone has to like calm me down and tell me that it's okay. And I'll be like, okay, right, fine. Like, as long as you're confident, even though I'm still not. Um, 
Um, unfortunately, I have to end our discussion, but these guys will be around in, in the lobby to answer more questions and hopefully through the weekend. Um, if you have a ticket for Interior Leather Bar, you can stay here and the, uh, the staff will come around and um, take your ticket from you. Um, but let's give these guys a big round of applause.